Okay, so this week marks the final episode of my Infantry Jobs mini-series. Uh, this week, what I'm going to cover is the Rifle Company. Welcome back to the channel then. If you're new, hello. Uh, my name's Luke, I've been serving soldier now for about 13 years. Um, so what, what this week's then is gonna consider, or what we're gonna cover then, sorry, is episode five of the mini-series started. Uh, and it's just about um, infantry jobs, and um, all the different avenues you can do within the infantry, and specialist trades and roles you can, and qualifications they can bring to you, both military and civilian. Um, so that'll just be the end of the mini-series. Um, after that then, um, it's you know, what the channel will have designed it for anyway is to sort of bring a bit, shed more light on sort of serving in the British Army in particular um, that whether that be in work so uniform on exercise operations whatnot then also the sort of civilian side of it as well so you know what's life like as a soldier obviously if you've been following this channel since we well, since I first started uh, you will notice I've been in all these sort of confined sort of spaces because so I'm currently not in the UK at the minute and uh, I'm deployed out overseas that is due to um, imminently so close when that does happen then uh, the freedom of movement will be a lot more than what i've got now at the minute so i will be able to um portray betterly like what sort of uh, life it's like in the army i have got a lot of leave coming up and um, i'm talking like i come back from here i've got a couple of uh, work for a couple of days to get everything sorted and then i am um, uh, straight away two weeks leave too yeah, two weeks leave, come back to work again for another couple of days and shoot away off again and leave for pretty much the whole of December where I'm going to America, Disneyland with the family in our, uh, Florida. Uh, come back from there, I have a couple of days at home and then back into work again for a week. I'm still on leave, but not on the leave card now because uh, I'm going away to Val Skiing skiing uh, with the company which I'm a part of uh, in work. We'll go away there, ski for a week come back again to the UK and then I go continue on the rest of my leave which is all of January basically and I don't come back to work till like February time so there's a lot there. Also then made a few investments with the channel and um, so I've got a sort of um, bits and pieces to sort of bring the production value um, of what I provide to use um, to a higher state and um, so look forward to all that in, in upcoming episodes and um, never really done any unboxing stuff maybe we'll look into that sort of thing there's a lot of kit waiting for me and sort of piling up and um, in the front door of my house anyway when I get back um, so yeah if you enjoy us then obviously give us a like subscribe share if you know someone mostly if you know someone who's maybe thinking about the British Army um, and they want a little bit more insight share it to them uh, or anyone that you might feel like would get something out of it and if you're not if you know intentions of going to the military um, or you know maybe your pastor or whatnot and um, it's fine uh, there will be a lot more entertainment brought to use um, once I get back uh, into the UK then so this week's episode then, so it's the rifle company. Saved this one for the last. Obviously, all the other ones were all sort of specialist weapons um, and where you can go to within infantry. The rifle company then, that's sort of 90% um, of people when they pass out of training, this is where you're gonna start your career. And for most people, you could do your whole career if you wanted to here, or bounce in and out. Like I now, so what, 13 years, and my whole term in the, in the army has been in a, a rifle company. I've always been rifle company. So let's talk about the breakdown of the rifle company. This is, now this is gold standard and what it is on paper and on the value of people in there. So a rifle company then will consider off three rifle platoons. Now a platoon then, this would be apparent to anyone joining the military as an army. Um, doesn't matter what trade or corps you're going to, you will have an exposure to what a platoon is and um, because that's the sort of how you're sort of made up and um, within the sort of chain establishments, whether it be Perlwright, Winchester, you know, Harrogate, Catrick, all the main places, you'll always go into that sort of platoon first. I think um, of that size, that's the way you're going to be looking like whenever you come to an infantry regiment. Now, so I know some training establishments may have four sections in there, but for us, we just have three. So a rifle company then will have three platoons. Right, with grab all them platoons then and further break that down, it will have three teams within that platoon. Those teams are called sections in the infantry. Um, they, each one will be commanded by a corporal, then he will have a second command, which is a lance corporal. So that section then is divided into two more teams. So it's just like one of them eggs, you break it all the way down, all the teams all the way down. 
Um, and obviously at the bottom then you have a ranger, a fusilier, a rifleman, or whatever the sort of term analogy is for your private level rank. Um, and that is the size. You'll have a CQMS team, so they're the people who look after all your kit and equipment and issue it out, whether it be weapons, night vision, um, armor, all that sort of stuff. And then you'll have company headquarters, which is headed up by uh, company commander, which in this case, the rank of that would be a major. And um, you've got the, so that's the, the sort of officer route. You'll have his two IC, second command, which is the rank of a captain. And then you'll have the sergeant major, um, who's a W2. And he's a guy who's been, he's joined the army as a private and worked it all the way, all the way up to the top. And that's just sort of near enough his last rank. And whereas captain, um, is pretty junior-ish as such, the start of his officer career. Um, and that is the sort of makeup of what a rifle company is. So courses in, and um, you're gonna go, you'll go in, uh, your first promotion course then um, is a junior NCO Carter. That is an external course, and that is not just specific to a rifle company. All the other sort of specialist jobs we've talked about um, throughout the series, they will also go in and attend this course. So it doesn't matter where you are within your regiment, everyone will come do this one base standard um, course, and that is to teach you to be an NCO. That's your first shot and first steps into leadership. Normally that lasts around six weeks, uh, and that is, like it says in tenant, it's gonna give you the first exposure to leadership, uh, pushing you in, giving you command tasks, putting you into sort of stressful, um, stressful sort of situations on exercise, um, watching you and, and in what way you um, roll with that, and what way you're sort of judging it. Whenever you're fatigued, you're like not, not sleep, uh, the weather conditions you're in is pretty poor, and now you don't just have to sort of um, get yourself, do yourself up, you have to get and motivate a team of four or eight uh, soldiers beneath you. So that's your first one. That's gonna qualify you on the Scorpio then. You're gonna do, you can do, um, so you can put a year, two years minimum, um, for Lance Corporal, sorry, a year, in around that sort of area there, uh, and, and then you're sort of looking at going on that if you are meeting the requirements. So it's not a, a case of, okay, I've been in two years now, where's my NCO Carter? You're gonna to have to get um, recommended for it by your chain of command, and that's just being, just, you know, do all what you're meant to do, all your own basic soldiers. So you have to display that you are completely watertight as a soldier. Um, because what they're looking at then is, yes, okay, everyone can sort of uh, motivate themselves and do all that sort of stuff, but then do you have the ability to motivate people under you in crappy situations? Um, next then for uh, for the rifle company. So what I did mention on two episodes or three episodes again, these courses, what I'm saying now, the leadership courses, any guys or girls at the stage, because now three, um, infantry, four women, um, any stage of your career, say if you're a sniper or you've went assault pioneers or guns or mortars, they will all have their own career courses. But that doesn't mean these courses, what I'm about to say to you now, aren't just for rifle company people. Um, anyone can do these courses, so you can double hat. You can stay with this, and this will take you all the way up for your career, or you can jump in and out of the specialist weapons, so you're not sort of stuck down that one route. And um, like I said, uh, just think of it like a spider web. There's all these different um, routes and avenues you can take, which all can lead to the center, to the top, if you wanted that for your own career. Back into it again. So that's sort of second uh, level course then. Um, is going to be called is Junior Brecken and it's SCBC, so Section Commander's Battle Course. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's roughly around 14 ish weeks, um, and that's held down in Wales. And that's going to qualify you to corporal, so full corporal. And um, that is basically what, in my, in my personal sort of opinion, the best rank in the infantry is, is a corporal. You are like the trainer, so you will train everyone. Um, you, you know, you've got that ability to think outside the box and make training both safe and enjoyable, but the main thing is enjoyable, because the more enjoyable it is, the more you know people like, kind of get sucked into it and get a lot more out of it. Um, so the course in itself is split down into two bits. You'll have your skill at arms phase, which is your, f I think they do it first. Um, you'll go down there and they will teach you how to teach, so how to instruct, and specifically gonna be on weapons. Just all the sort of platoon weapon systems you would sort of see within an infantry platoon, they'll teach you the skills and how to teach that. 
um, because that is your main sort of role as a search commander is you'll teach weapon drills and you'll be able to qualify then to take the tests and assessments that we all have to take annually so weapon handling tests or anyone needs to take this certain test on a weapon system before they progress down using that so it's like sharpshooter gpmg you know pistol rifle all of it so that's your sort of first half of the course um, second half of the course is tactics then, so that's all the sort of outdoor stuff um, different instructors now um, compared from the sort of more classroom based stuff you'll do and you'll go away into the field and you're going to learn all about basic reconnaissance so not to <coughs> excuse me, let me it's not going to be the same level as the your reconnaissance platoons but sort of base standard knowledge of it ambushes patrols attacks how to live in you know in the wood blocks so a harbor area like defensive locations all that sort of stuff and it'll be your first sort of prop you'll have a little bit of exposure to it's in the orders process so you'll have a little bit of exposure to it in your first lance corporal course so your nco quarter but this is more in depth so it's teaching you how to look at a problem on a map or you know, a task or wherever it is in the ground how to analyze it properly and make a plan up make a model on the ground deliver your plan and then go and action your plan out on the ground so that's get gets amongst all that there Okay, so as soon as you've done that then, you're now qualified to corporal and you can promote to corporal. Like I said, um, best job in the uh, best rank in the infantry because you've got that freedom of movement to plan all this sort of training and, and, and basically get amongst it. Also what it does then, is now you've got that sort of qualifications in an instructor. It enables you then to go across the rest of the military and do all the vast amount of courses that are out there. Um, so you can then teach that back to your units. So I'm talking like JWIC, which is your Jungle Warfare Instructors course. It's Brunei, I think. I'm not sure in the time frame and how long it is. That's going away into Brunei, learn all about jungle warfare, how to survive in the jungle, and um, you know all that sort of stuff. And then gives you this sort of um, the instructor. Then you become an instructor in that as such. And then you can come back and sort of uh, cascade that training. Uh, urban operations instructors, you can go away uh, and go really in depth into uh, the fine detail of urban operations and room clearance and all that sort of stuff. And then that gives you that instructor qualification then, so you can come back and teach that back. Uh, there's loads more. Um, there's a lot out there. There's like, um, there's like SEER, SEER courses as well you can do down south of England and go away and learn how to live off the land, all that sort of stuff. There, there is a wide variety out there. Some people might be thinking, well, what does you know urban operations instructor course? How you know how can I relate that into civilian street? Like, I'm gonna go for a manager job in Tesco's or something when I'm when I've passed the RN and goes, well, what have you got? I, I can clear rooms, I can clear buildings, I can clear a rifle. Okay, that's one way to look at it, but the other way is it's experience wise. So being this level of instructor, so the corporal, then it's you are a sort of generalist. Um, you never actually specifically specialise in a particular thing. It gives you that um, the flexibility then to go away and pick up uh, a syllabus or, or whatever is in the specific subject, learn that and then teach that back. It's also instilling a lot of confidence in lads, um, teaching to big, big groups of people. Um, gives an experience of working with different groups of people. So one person may learn a different way than another person. Well, now you have to adapt your teaching styles to get in and around that. So you're getting the, the same um, product from both soldiers. And that was so leading me on to the point where once you do this course, that qualifies you into working in a training establishment. So that's a really gleaming two years. I've done it. I was in Catrick as a section commander. And it was really good, like one of the best two years I've had in the army. Um, and you go away and teach him basic training. So yes, that is corporal. Okay, the next then is uh, your sort of senior qualifying course, and that's called PSBC, so Platoon Sergeant's Battle Course. Um, it is I think 11 or 12 weeks as well. The only difference is it's it's like flipped around, upside down, so other not so differently than SEBC, you will go on tactics first, so that is your field stuff first. Um, you will be the role of platoon sergeant, so it's all the administration in the field, uh, casualties, and um, all that sort of stuff. Um, that is about seven weeks or so of tactics. Uh, you'll also sort of learn about the platoon commander, what way he thinks, and what he, what way he writes his orders, and what way he estimates, does his estimate, 
um, so the problem he's given by the OC. Uh, so to just think of it as, as a bigger picture on what the corporal knows. Um, so you delve into that because obviously if the platoon commander isn't there for whatever reason, then you're always that one way of, of stepping up that job. So platoon sergeant would slot into that platoon commander's job. So that's why you have to like sort of get taught um, exposure to what he or she might have to do. Uh, and then the second half of that course then is LFTT, so live fire and tactical training. So what that teaches you then is how to plan a live fire. So other than operations, the best thing about being in the infantry is your live fire exercises. So that's like, so if you've seen all the videos and stuff, well I've got one then of PDT, we're in um, War Cup. So it's, you're running around, so instead of using these blank ammunition, now you're using this live ammunition. Um, and this basically is giving you the license to plan these ranges. Um, and you know they go into all the, the, the SASC, so the Small Arms School Corps, the guys that teach you um, weapons and anything to do with ranges and stuff. They go into a lot in, in depth in this course and showing you just how far you can go with this qualification. And, and it's just really good qualification um, once you get amongst it. Like this, this is qualifying you too. You could go out to a different country, say, I don't know, Kenya for instance, uh, in the bush and there was nothing there. Uh, you've got the ability then, and the knowledge to, to plan a range out there. And it goes all into distances of, you know, uh, bullet velocity and you know capture where the bullet's gonna land and whatnot. So you know that could be a transferable skill. Definitely if weapons is something that you're really interested in, shotgun firing or you're part of a gun club or whatnot, um civilian side of it, I'm sure you could probably pick up a sort of the civilian equivalent qualification and um, with the knowledge learned by using this. But that's a really big one, especially if you've got it now in your platoon, you can go away now and plan training for your platoon. So your such commanders, the the ones that are so capable of thinking outside the box and come up with all this sort of uh, like a really good way of learning and, and getting about things they'll give you what they want to do then you see right okay can i is that like completely crazy or can can we make this happen and this will be class you look through all your notes and see okay that yeah okay that's safe we can make this happen and then you're that small team can go away and sort of create that so everyone under you so all your private soldiers and stuff are getting some really high class training so that's platoon sergeant so that is your last sort of uh, hard as such course to do um, if you're gonna go that sort of route. Civilian qualifications then. So it's the same as you think back to the signals um, um, episode where it was the leadership management because these courses, so SABC and PSBC, it's all about leadership and management really. Um, that, that's the sort of equivalent side of, side of it. Um, so there is options for you to convert your military qualifications into civilian ones. I can't go into it in detail because there's lots of different ones you can do. There's a, there's a sheet you can get, like you speak to your education officer, and if you're in the army and you know what they are, uh, and they have a sheet showing you the equivalent of your NCO Carter, juniors and seniors, uh, and all the different ones you can pick, whether it be like uh, MVQ or a, a level, you know, different levels or certificates and whatnot, and then you can build them up throughout your career use your other bonuses then to start off a degree if you wanted to um, or not but it's good to transfer them because it then shows progression for your career um, so when you go to a civilian employer and you show them your cv they can see that natural progression because uh, civilian jobs they like to see that sort of natural progression uh, cool so that's basically it that's um, the military side courses as such and the civilian qualifications you can get out of it so you can sort of flip them around um, Last then is life basically, so life in a rifle company. Now, people may have had bad experiences in the army and they'll get out and have a chip on their shoulder or such, and they'll be like, ah oh, yeah, I flipping, just cleaning weapons for like 10 hours a day, especially on a Friday afternoon. Would have been doing nothing all day and then suddenly cleaning like 100 weapons. Right, okay, yeah. Definitely doesn't happen all the time, but maybe there is sometimes it happens, but whatever. But never really focus on the good times. And a rifle company, I think it's brilliant because it's, 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 a, it's a big team. So all the sort of specialist weapons, they're like, that's sort of thing, they're all good. Small teams and um, quite tight bond, bonded teams. But what, I, what way I think as a rifle company is, it's this big massive team and you have a wide variety. Variety, yeah. Can, I can never say that word like variety. Yeah, whatever. It's a massive sort of range of different personalities and characters in this rifle company. And they're, you know, ranging from all these different ages as well. Click that all together and you've got like a recipe for greatness. It is mental, it's, it's good. And all the stuff you do outside of work, so work is important obviously, and um, because we're the sort of tip of the bayonet as such, 
Um, so all the sort of special stuff, you know, facilitate everything happening at the very end of the day. It's the rifle company that's going to go forward and go through that door, or go through that FUP, and it's going to be the sort of very edge of the fight. Um, and you could even think of it as it's the actual, the infantry is the tip of the whole army. So all the sort of stuff that, you know, are the sort of cogs and make the army turn around on the centre. The infantry are the, the, right out there. If you think about the rifle company then, that is the exact tip of an infantry regiment. So on the grander scale of things, it is the tip of the whole army, it is in the infantry. Um, and, and that's where it all matters. So obviously your job um, is a big thing, a part of it. So all the training, the physical fitness, uh, training for exercises, all your different skill sets you're required to know, so your med stuff, um, your, your navigation, all these sort of things are highly important as well. But then you've got the sort of other side, the social aspect of it, um, which, like I said, with other with um, such commanders not thinking outside the box, free training, this also happens in the social aspect of it as well. So if you think now in a big accommodation, you're all living together in all these different rooms and stuff. So you're never stuck for a drink and buddy at the weekend. You're never stuck for someone for some scoff and Nando's, go to cinema, do stuff. There's always someone there. So I think there's a lot of cohesion in there. Also, then what I was on about like big personalities and characters um, within the rifle company. We've got a lot, so I'm gonna to have to use my own company as an example, because I'm in it now at the minute. So it's November now, so it wouldn't be bad to mention the word Christmas, because it's very close. So let's, think, let's, let, let's talk about Christmas. So Christmas, um, what happens annually in all sort of jobs, they have this sort of, you know, within the, the Christmas drinks as such, and um, where the sort of office will get together and we will go for, you know, a nice wee three course meal, and maybe down to the local pub and, you know, have a few scoops and call it night, or it could be a little bit of an office party, whatever, I ain't been to one inside the military, but think now, so in my company specifically, we are got, we, so we've got, so this is costing the blokes basically nothing, um, absolutely nothing. We're gonna go back, uh, we're gonna get a coach, one or two, I think it's one at the minute, a coach, and it's gonna transport everyone. We're gonna go and we're gonna do a bit of a, like a fizz event, so physical event, because why wouldn't you? We're infantry. It's not gonna be like a mad eight miler and something crazy and break them, but a little bit of a fun runner, just no, I'm not gonna let too much because some of them may be watching it, but there's a little bit of fizz in there anyway. Then we're going to a, a very big city um, within the UK itself. We're gonna meet up there. Sort of people, I'm not completely mentioning them, but they'll know who they are. People within the company and sort of higher aspects have, uh, we've got like a club booked out and um, everyone's gonna be wearing certain suits. Uh, we're gonna meet there, have scoff, entertainment's gonna be um, played in the um, way of video. That's about 30 minutes to 40 minutes. Um, have scoff, so food, beers, that's still they're not paying any money there initially, and then we venture off into this city, um, all suited up and booted up, uh, and then stay in sort of accommodation, and then transport back later that afternoon the next day, so it's like 24 hours, and um, we're talking like Men in Black, the Project X, V, the Hangover, <laughs> all completely unpaid for, and um, well, we produced it in the video, I'm not too sure, because obviously um, it stays in the office, will remain in the office, but you know that's the sort of level of planning that can go to something, and uh, to make something a lot more fun for uh, the people within your company or organization or whatnot. I obviously get it, some civilian organizations are restricted to what they can do, but yeah, it's gonna be completely, it's gonna be crazy. Um, and yeah, um, and, and, and that's a little bit on sort of on, on how sort of uh, you know uh, things can be thought of outside the box. Yeah, and that's just a quick example of showing you what life can be like the sort of military side, so the stuff I have to do, but then the social aspect of it as well. Because you're not, I, I, I think I, I've never heard of, of sort of um, you know local sort of because I've got loads of civilian friends and stuff as well who are plumbers and all the trades people. They just go down to the local pub and have a few beers. And that's basically it for the Christmas sort of um, night out as such. Maybe the old Christmas jumper, and that's about it. This is, yeah. I'll see what I can do, fellow wise. I can't promise you anything. Uh, and then, like I touched on before there about the skiing stuff as well. Definitely, that will be something. Um, I've got a few sort of things in my head, reference to sort of skiing. Um, I'm either going to try and vlog it daily and upload it every day, or I'm going to collate it all together and make a sort of skiing film as such, like a short film. Um, on what that was like for us being there. 
Um, yeah, and that's basically it. So, episode five, The Rifle Company, finished off. That is now the, the job series done. If you've liked this sort of mini job series, and if you, not even if you liked it, if you've got something out of it and it's given you more information that you, you, not, you may not have been aware of, uh, please give me a like and um, share it to someone who would get something out of it. Like I said then, it's obviously the last episode. I'm due to sort of move back to the UK very imminently. Not giving exact dates for obvious reasons. But it's sort of, uh, it, uh, that's going to hinder me. So I will, there will be no episode next Thursday. The later episode then potentially will be the following Monday or Tuesday. I can't remember the date off the top of my head. So it's not next Thursday, but the following Monday or Tuesday. Um, and that will be a little bit interesting. And we'll see what way it goes. It won't be sort of specific to the job. It may be a bit of a traveling one or whatnot, but that'll be it. And then from there, then maybe a, bit, a week or two just to adjust because obviously I'm gonna have to get a new recording studio, which is gonna be in my house because I'll be moving in around the place where I am now. Yeah, so it's like loads of big stuff to come to the channel itself and uh, aiming then to bring a, bit, a little bit more entertainment to yourselves. Um, so please like and subscribe. If you already have liked and subscribed and you're watching these and you're sharing them around, I really do appreciate it. It's helping me grow uh, and I really do appreciate it. And I have that in the back of my head, head and that's the reason why I've got some other bits and pieces to sort of bring the production value of the channel up to give you that little bit more of uh, um, entertainment. I don't want to sort of veer away from the sort of uh, the foundations of the channel being that sort of informative channel. Um, but I do want to bring a little bit more entertainment showing you like how life can be good even probably better um, and then not read the social side of it as well um, so that is us um, cheers for joining us again uh, don't forget then obviously Facebook and Instagram for all the sort of still pictures and stuff and I can engage with you there privately if you don't want to leave any comments in the comment section below that is it it's going to be a long time so I will see you again in just over sort of a week and a half and such it's going to be class can't wait uh, and I'll see you then